aging face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to our top five video from your troll course, the Scarender. And as you guys can see on the screen, it's gonna focus on, of course, the taboos and ultra beasts for this video, mainly because I was actually doing the videos on my top five fairy Pokemon of this generation, of course, generation seven, that is. And they realized that it was just going to be filled with Tapus and very, very powerful Pokemon. And I really want to give more Pokemon, of course, a bit of a spotlight. And by doing this list, I am, of course, advising myself to actually include other Pokemon that are much, much more unique than, of course, the Tapus and Ultra Beasts. Because, quite frankly, the Tapus and Ultra Beasts are probably the most unique Pokemon out there. Now, before, of course, going in, one has to, of course, say the usual stuff. You know, these are based on my personal opinions. And every Tapu and Ultra Beast are to be considered really really good are everything about them just stands out so this list is definitely going to focus on five pokemon that i think stands out more but it doesn't mean the others are bad but just that these fives are probably the ones that are more interesting and have much more building around them to make the pokemon unique so with that said of course guys enjoy this list at the number five slot we have of course bustle and fermosa so a bit of a cup out here but it, the reason for it is that we simply just had a finding and of course a bug type with Heracross for what is that sixth generation till we actually got another variant of it. And I really liked the idea that finally they kind of stretched it out a little bit. Of course, Mega Heracross was introduced generation six, wasn't necessarily introducing anything new outside of its wall breaking capabilities. Now we get two more Pokemon with a bit of a wider, of course, move pool, Bustle, of course, being more like the Mega Heracross. Much more defensively in Bond, a bit slower, has a great variety of movesets, and of course, Ice Punch, which is really standing out in the Thunder Punch, which is something Heracross does lack. Heracross does have a great variety of movesets, but not like this, and it makes Bustle that much more interesting. And of course, you get it with, of course, Beast Boost, making, of course, a bit of the Mox ability going on, but in a more bulked up situation. With that said, that also goes with Feramosa being a more Glass Cannon like ability, definitely more reminiscent of the Scarf sets. A variant of Heracross, but this time we actually had the variety of actually changing up moves with, of course, a life form or a choice manager, so desire, even life form. Yeah, I did say that, didn't I? Anyway, uh, Feramosa gets the likes of Ice Speed, for example, and it has a very, very good mixed attacking capabilities. It's super, super fragile, very weak to priority, of course, basically one shots it. But, you know, if Heracross was to be a glass cannon with a Mox generation, this could probably be it because it looks the part, and both these Pokemon definitely brought something new. I feel like Heracross was kind of stale and just did its thing really good. They have two different sets that work really well against it. These two Pokemon introduce a variety with these sets in mind, making these two one of my more favorite, of course, Ultra Beast in the generation. And quite frankly, they should have been a lot higher, but there are just so many good Pokemon introducing this generation, so I really, really just barely could cop them in here. And as you guys see, it's a shared spot for that very reason. Because I feel that the, the idea are embodying so much with your across prime idea from, of course, previous generations. On my number four spot, I actually said Tapu Bulo. Now, Tapu Bulo on its own is not the most impressive Pokemon. While it does a one and third attack, which is incredibly dangerous with you know, the grassy terrain, which of course boosts its Woodhammer and Horn Leech, it doesn't have the best kind of move pool. It has Superpower and I do believe Mega Horn. And could utilize, you know, send headbutt and stuff like that, but it just isn't, you know, up there. But its damage output is still insane. You get it with, of course, Choice of Band. This thing just hits like a truck. But the reason one would consider this one of the better ones introduced each generation is mainly because of that grassy terrain. Um, it does get, of course, recovery, but that's not the point here. The grassy terrain makes sure that Pokemon that you are synergized with have a beneficial point here. Poison Pokemon, of course, the likes of Toxapex, for example, love having this support, you know, having the reduction of earthquake damage is helpful. And Pokemon, of course, without recovery, so of course, Empoleon now can flourish a little bit better because we have a reduction of, of course, earthquake damage and we've got, of course, extra recovery. So Tapu Bulu is a very good Pokemon on its own, but it becomes a lot, lot better with, of course, this synergizing capabilities in mind, which is something that a lot of these Pokemon in this generation just simply didn't have. A lot of these Pokemon were individually really, really, really strong didn't synergize necessarily all that bad. And here comes a Pokemon that on its own is a very, very strong Pokemon, but doesn't have so much variety on his move pool, but synergize effectively so good. So Tapu Bulo is one of my best favorite Pokemon, of course, this generation, due to that very reason alone. It's a smart definition of like, making, of course, a grass and fairy typing kind of viable. Kind of sad that they missed it out, and of course, a stab hit or play rough. 
but having an offensive whimsy card we love, a physical whimsy card is kind of cool, and this definitely looks the spot too. So the sidewise, love this guy. I think it's one of the coolest things introduced, and that is why it is, of course, on my fourth spot. Coming at number three are actually another Ultra Beast, and that is gonna be Celestila. And yeah, you know, the waifu of this generation actually learned that word through Celestila. I don't, I kind of want to, I want to, I want that back. Can I, can I, can somebody please remove that from my head? Anyway, Celestilla is also like, of course, uh, Heracross was, uh, a very, very unique type being only re introduced in Generation 2, haven't been actually rewamped since then, uh, only, of course, by Skarmory, who's been a more passive Pokemon with, of course, reliable recovery. Here comes a more offensive Pokemon, and, um, Celestilla has instead Capabilities of dealing with, of course, Skarmory's biggest issue with, of course, Magnuson and, of course, being locked out. Celestia has the option to actually, of course, with Earthquake, resolve that issue. Like I said here, it does lack recovery, but it gets, of course, Leech Seed, which, quite frankly, makes this Pokemon super, super frustrating to deal with. And, of course, Heavy Slam hits almost all, every time with 120 base power due to its being, well, heavier than Groudon. Kind of feel like that's a scary fun on its own because this thing isn't that big, but yeah, the bamboo steel fortress is um, it's a heavy hitter, and of course, like I said, variety of moves that there. It's a very very strange Pokemon, and it's just very fun to see of such a great of course defensive type being being used potentially offensively because of course like a flame charge against grass knot we or we have more we have air slash. It's just it's one of those really really weird ones. And I love it for it because the variety is just there. And like I said, they're dealing with Magnus Zones or Magnetons with Earthquake makes this Pokemon, even if you can't trap it, it doesn't mean you win that matchup, which is something Skarmory has never experienced. So seeing this combination of typing and resolving a biggest issue of the previous generation just, I just it just feeds my soul with pleasantment. So Slesla, you're awesome. And thank you for joining, of course, this Generation 7 roster. At number two spot, we have Tapu Koko. And, um, yeah, it should just come as no surprise. Tapu Koko is a very weird Pokemon. Uh, you know, of course, the typing electric and, of course, very super, super unique. Uses its stab really, really well. Of course, Thunder, Thunderbolt, Volt Switch. It has Volt Switch and U-Turn, which is just unheard of. Very few Pokemon can utilize that, even on the electric field, you believe. Is like a mole guy and like uh, Electros. I do believe that's the only ones you can utilize this efficiently, though. Its special attack isn't as high as one was hoping for. 95, unimpressive, is much, much more destructive on the physical side. But trust me, while the physical move pool all good, because of course, Brave Brood and Wild Charge, there are a lot of, of course, recalling born with a product, probably a bit bad HP stat. You're much better off, of course, Life Orb and Hidden Power or anything like that. But it gets Roost, which also kind of enforces it. It's a special attacker who can set up Calm Minds and can Roost. And of course have a great variety, making a very, very good mixed wall breaker, potentially Sweeper. More, of course, a Sweeper variety. So I really like Tabu Coco. It was definitely one of the few that stood out as a Pokemon that was so unique and had a lot of things going for it that it could actually sustain itself really well. This is probably one of the few strong individual Pokemon. The other ones are definitely strong, but I do believe this is one of the strongest for that very reason. Because it can, of course, recover. It has a great variety of move, making it super unpredictable. And just overall, that speed tier 1 and 30, you know, joining, of course, the Jolteon and stuff like that. Super, super scary because there are only so many switches for a Pokemon this strong who can set up and, of course, recover itself. There are no stallouts for this Pokemon. While it could be easily KO'd, uh, the Thunder Surge just makes its Thunderbolt so dangerous. You know, a resisted hit is just a definition when you hit with a specs boost to damage, which, of course, what the Thunder Train is doing, or Electric Train. So that is why it is, of course, on my number two spot. Coming in, of course, my number one spot is Guslord. This is the Pokemon for this generation. It is so dangerous. Such a great variety of moves. It's a very, very hard-hitting mixed move pool. And, of course, a speed here that is barely usable. There is no question in mind that Gus Guslord is the most... Yeah, you suck. You're definitely not number one. I'm sorry, guys. Let's get on to the number one spot. I'm sorry. At number one, we have Tapu Lele, and yeah, I know this is very, very boring putting Tapu Lele at the first spot because everybody knows how dangerous it is. And as I said about Tapu Koko, individual strength has to be considered, and Tapu Lele definitely are individual strength. 
there is no way I could tell you, know, tell you guys anything differently about Sabalele. We have a Pokemon with 130 special attack, which is just insane. 95 speed, which is kind of bad. Uh, definitely, in definition, it's worse than Mega Guarded War. If one has to consider, of course, since this is, of course, Psychic and Fairy God, would definitely are the closest thing relatable to it. But what makes the difference here is the Psychic Terrain. And, of course, that this thing can use Scarf so well. I mean, it's it's one of those things, you know, if you, due to Psychic Terrain, you're dealing, you're resolving the worst issue that Mega Guard War had, which was that, you know, Bullet Punch knocks it out. You don't have that issue with Tabulele because, of, of course, you are immune to that priority damage. And, of course, usually going by Scarf means that you are going first if the opponent doesn't have any, of course, priority to hit you with. And that kind of won't throw out if, of course, you have Psychic Terrain in motion. And, of course, the 130 special attack with a Specs boosted uh, Psychic, you know, or the Terrain making, of course, with a 50% boost of Psychic damage. It is just insane. It's so hard to switch into. Even Walls barely takes on... This thing usually to its kill anything that comes in, and this Pokemon can definitely break asunder more, of course, bulkier team, but also can deal really well with those hyper offensive team due to its being able to outspeed most of the Pokemon on the field. If you're facing a Tapu Lele, there's a very, very high chance that the one winning that battle is the one with you know, the Tapu Lele last remaining. It's not a joke. If you lack like Tapu Lele, you have lost. Tapu Lele has just such a big and insane damage output that I couldn't put it in any other place and of course in number one spot. It is just so hard to deal with and it's such a great Pokemon to use in this generation for better or worse really. So that's the list my friends and quite honestly here like I said there every Ultra Beast and Tapu, Tapu Pokemon is great. Uh, the only one I think are bad is Gust Lord. Outside of that they are awesome and could easily fit this list. This list was definitely more of, you know, my experience with these Pokemon and how I appreciated them, of course, in, of course, a Wi-Fi battle environment. So it might not be on spot, but I must say Tapu Lele is probably everyone's number one spot. But it's just one of those Pokemon that just are so disgusting to deal with. But Pokemon such, of course, you know, Cortana, uh, definitely one of those really, really cool Pokemon is that actually is offensively for Etres, which is just unheard of. So it might as well have Put, put this list too. Same thing with circuitry. I actually think the circuitry is really, really good, but solely electric type with a high, high special attack has been done before. Maybe not that high, but it still is. I kind of feel that that isn't set in motion all that well. And same thing with Tabufini. It's a bit of passive for my taste, but it's a great defogger. It's a good utility Pokemon, but the other Pokemon in Druze here are just that much more interesting for me. So, what do you guys think? What Pokemon do you guys definitely appreciate? Of course, it comes to Ultra Beast. And for any Gust Lord fans there, I'm sorry. It's just bad. <laughs> I do love its design, though. I think one of, it's probably the, the sleekest of the, all of the Ultra Beasts, but sadly not that good. But yeah, thank you, of course, so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.